to right. Smart has the outlet pass, crosses over, hesitates, shoots for three, top of the key, off the rim, and in! And a foul called! Held the three-pointer for Marcus Smart! Welcome back, you guys, and Marcus Smart has been one of the leaders of the Boston Celtics since Rajon Rondo was traded at the 2015 deadline. He has grown into one of the league's best defenders and at times one of the most frustrating players to watch. But for all of his flaws as a player, he is undoubtedly the heart of the Boston Celtics. Let's talk about his journey and how he has helped the Boston Celtics become the top defense in the NBA. Marcus Smart played high school basketball in Flower Mound, Texas and developed into one of the top players in his 2012 class. He was a five-star recruit, the number one shooting guard in the nation, and was recruited by North Carolina, Texas, and Oklahoma. He was known for using his size and strength to bully smaller players on the floor and getting out in transition after grabbing a rebound. The defense, the competitiveness, and the intensity Marcus brings to the court for the Celtics is what you saw with him in high school. But before he would go on to Oklahoma State to play college basketball, he had to overcome a lot of demons from when he was a child. At the age of 8, he tried marijuana and got so sick that he had to get taken to the emergency room, but he never told his mom what he did. When he was 9, his older brother Todd passed away from leukemia, and Marcus said that his brother was like a second father, and his passing hit him hard. Marcus would begin to steal candy and soda from stores. To help release his anger, he would do it by fighting people. Marcus described himself in an interview as a bully when he was a kid. He would get into multiple fights a week at school, and he said that he almost killed a kid in a fight, but a teacher came over just in time before he could continue. Marcus says that his anger was like a broken arm boiling inside of him. He did not know how to express that anger properly, so he would do it by fighting people. One time, Marcus and his friends got jumped, and he brought out a pocket knife, and one of the people he was fighting brought out a pellet gun. Marcus ran away from the fight to get his dad's pistol, but before he could leave the house with it, his older brother Michael was able to stop him and keep Marcus inside the house. There was one moment that will be stuck in Marcus's mind forever, and it was when he was throwing rocks at strangers from a long distance. Marcus would often do this, but this time the person he hit turned out to be someone in a gang. The man ended up getting off his bike, chased Marcus in the woods while firing shots from his pistol that almost hit Marcus. He says that he doesn't like telling that story because what would you do if you were in that situation? It's just not a pretty sight to try to imagine running, literally running for your life. Marcus and his family moved, he would end up taking anger management classes, and he would slowly mature and take out his frustration in sports. At Oklahoma State, he was supposed to leave his freshman year. Many mock drafts in 2013 had him slated as a top three pick. ESPN had him as the second best player in the draft. It was an odd decision to come back for his freshman year because most people who are looked at as a top five pick leave because you could mess up your draft stock in the next season. In his sophomore season, he bumped up his scoring average to 18 points and his assists to five, but the most infamous moment from his sophomore year was when he pushed a fan after he claimed that the fan used a racial slur at him. Marcus was suspended for three games. Oklahoma State was knocked out in the first round of the NCAA tournament that year, and he declared for the 2014 draft. When the Boston Celtics selected Marcus Smart with the 6th pick of the 2014 draft, people were wondering how could it work next to Rondo as they were both non-shooters. A co-owner of the Celtics said that, We like the fact that he's an instigator. Red Auerbach told me that you need instigators, not retaliators. He's a bull. In his rookie season, Marcus established himself as one of the team's best defenders and was selected to the NBA's all-rookie second team. Scrolling down Marcus Smart's shooting percentages in his career, you can clearly see that he's not someone that is going to hurt you as a scorer. Marcus is not somebody you would consider a high-level pick-and-roll ball handler, but he has his moments definitely where he makes smart plays off the bounce. In his four years in the NBA, Marcus does not have one season over 40% field goal shooting, and this 2018 season was his first year ever shooting over 30% at the three-point line. There will be some nights where he's shooting like Larry Bird at the three-point line, and that opens up the door for a big offensive night for the Celtics. But there will be nights where you say to yourself, oh my god, please stop shooting Marcus. As you're watching this right now, Marcus Smart probably just took a shot with his foot on the three-point line with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. He can be involved in the worst plays for the Celtics, then in that same game he'll make a play that'll help win the game for them. It's pretty rare that someone who is a bad shooter at the guard position has such a big impact. It's his energy and commitment to defense is what gets him on the court. 
The Boston Celtics had the number one ranked defense in the NBA this season, and yes, the Celtics have a great team defense with multiple 6'7", 6'9", guys that can guard many positions, but Smart is the driving force. I would say that he's just as important for the Celtics as Al Horford on the defensive end, if not more important sometimes. In the first quarter of a game, you'll see Marcus chase JJ Redick around screens, then he'll defend Ben Simmons' drives in the next quarter. I know Tristan Thompson isn't known as a post player on offense, but there was a possession in this Cavs series where Tristan couldn't even move him. Every part of defense, Marcus is pretty much a lead at. On ball defense, post defense, knowing when to help, switching onto players with different skill sets and creating turnovers. I mean, how many times has he stolen one of LeBron's lazy passes where he didn't even get past half court yet? He has incredible timing when going for steals and his ability to switch onto many positions allows a weaker defender on the Celtics to defend a less serious threat. At 6 foot 4, 220 pounds with a 6'9 wingspan, Marcus Smart is like a linebacker with defensive back instincts on the court. He is often boxing out centers so another player can pick up the rebound. You guys know the cliche sayings like, he does the things that don't show up in the box score, he does the little things, he sets the tone. Marcus Smart does all of those things and he is elite at them. With all of his flaws on offense, you need a guy that can make winning plays and someone that you can go to war with. He is an intense guy and very vocal. About a week ago, Celtics head coach Brad Stevens said that they don't even skirmish this late into the year because Marcus won't tone it down. You need a guy like Marcus to set the tone, and while he's not the best player on Boston, he's been the heart of the team. This summer, Marcus Smart will be a free agent, and the Boston Celtics are going to have a dilemma on their hands. He's been in trade rumors for the past year, but nothing came from that, so the Celtics could lose him for nothing if he feels like they gave him a low offer. They also have to think about what to do with Terry Rozier after his breakout season. It gives Rozier trade value, and he could be the starting point guard on another team in 2019 when his contract runs out. What do you guys think? Should the Celtics bring back Marcus Smart, and for what price? So that is the story of Marcus Smart. I hope it was interesting to listen to. I had fun with this topic. Shout out to you if you're still watching. Leave a like as it helps my channel grow. The support has been great, and I'll see you guys in my next upload.